just wanted to share something with you. Sean King, who writes for the New York Daily News and who I follow on Twitter, and if you don't follow Sean King on Twitter, do so. Sean King is brilliant. And uh, he writes uh, regularly for the New York Daily News. And he wrote this piece called Why I'll Never Stand Again for the Star Spangled Banner. And here's, I just want to share uh, three paragraphs from Sean's piece about this. He says, first off, the song, he's talking about the Star Spangled Banner. He says, first off, the song, which was originally written as a poem, didn't become our national anthem until 1931, which was 117 years after Francis Scott Key wrote it. Most of us have no true idea what in the hell we've been hearing or singing all these years. But as it turns out, Key's full poem actually has a third stanza, which few of us have ever heard. In it, he openly celebrates the murder of slaves. Yes, really. It goes like this. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave and the star-spangled banner and triumph doth wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. And then, uh, and then Sean's King goes on to explain what that means. He says, well, it's always been known that the song was written during American slavery and that when those words about this nation being the land of the free didn't apply to the millions who had been held in bondage, Few of us had any idea that the song itself was rooted in the celebration of slavery and the murder of Africans in America who were being hired by the British military to give them strength, not only in the War of 1812, but in the Battle of Fort McHenry in 1814. These black men were called the Corps of Colonial Marines, and they served valiantly for the British military, and Francis Scott Key despised them. He was glad to see them experience terror and death in war to the point that he wrote a poem about it, and that poem is now our national anthem. While I fundamentally reject the notion that anyone who owned other human beings was either good, moral, or decent, Francis Scott Key left absolutely no doubt that he was a stone-cold bigot. He came from generations of plantation-owning bigots. See, I don't call them plantations anymore. I call them concentration camps, but anyhow. They got wealthy off of it. Key, as district attorney of Washington, fought for slavery and against abolitionists every chance he'd get, he got. Even when Africans in D.C. were injured or murdered, Francis Scott Key stood strong against justice for them. He openly spoke racist words against Africans in America. Key said that they were, quote, a distinct and inferior race of people which all experience proves to be the greatest evil that afflicts a community, end quote. This is in the context of uh, Colin Kaepernick's uh, refusal to stand for the Star Spangled Banner. Sean King nails it, as Sean, as, as Sean King so often does. And it's just a, it's a, a brilliant piece. Check it out. Here, the British, yeah, well, I, I, I don't have time to go into the whole backstory. But anyhow, we'll be back right after the break. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-808-9925. The article, by the way, is in the New York Daily News. It's titled King, colon, Why I'll Never Stand Again for the Star-Spangled Banner by Sean King. S-H-A-U-N-K-I-N-G.